ladies and gentlemen. You know, it was Trump that wants the military in D.C. Well, the generals had a huge problem with this, and they have pulled out the 82nd Airborne Division from Washington, D.C. So look like the generals just overruled Trump. Uh, just so tight in about uh, another month or two, he'll be firing them. <laughs> you know how childish this man is. So this came out in the Daily Mail, June 5th, 2020. Generals win battle with Trump as 82nd Airborne are removed from D.C. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. Hundreds of combat soldiers with the 82nd Airborne was ordered to leave Washington, D.C. Thursday after retired general and the nation's top officers rebuked Donald Trump over his use of the military. Members of the elite unit had been deployed to the nation's capital to back up National Guard soldiers ordered on the streets by Attorney General Bill Barr in a show of force. The active duty soldiers will head back to the base in Fort Bragg, North Carolina, a senior defense official told NBC News after General and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, publicly told the nation's troops to uphold the Constitution and said that the National Guard was under governor's control, poignantly, not the president. Mm -mm -mm. Trump seems to think he's under control of everything, <laughs> everything up in here. Wow. The active duty soldiers so they're going back to Fort Bragg. Well, technically, they really should not have been in D.C. in the first place. The troops spent a week at bases near the city on standby as peaceful protesters turned violent in the nation's capital with instances of looting, arson, and destruction. But they were never called into D.C. to respond to the civil unrest. While the Capitol is under federal control, the removal of hundreds of combat troops was highly visible, a sign that Trump had been forced to retreat onto the threat to deploy soldiers under the control of the protest hit cities. Well, I mean, just because you don't like people protesting doesn't mean they should have troops sent on them. That That's pretty extreme. About 200 members of the Army's 82nd Airborne Division were sent to the, uh, the city capital, uh, were supposed to leave the region Wednesday night. The order was suddenly reversed. However, after the Defense Secretary, Mark Esper, made a visit to the White House Wednesday morning following a press conference where he attempted to distance himself from the infamous church photo op. The change also followed internal discussions Esper conducted at the Pentagon. Army Secretary Ryan McCarthy told the Associated Press. It also followed a 10 a.m. order on Wednesday to draw down some 1,600 forces, including infantry members who had been positioned outside Washington, D.C. What, what the hell are you doing using infantry soldiers on protesters or even attempting to do this? This president has lost his mind. I'm glad these generals you know, came, stepped up to the plate to put this mess to a stop. Trump, he treat people like he's at war with them. 1,600 forces, infantry soldiers, 
you, your infantry soldiers should be for war only, not for no damn protest. What the hell is wrong with this man? Trump is facing backlash for his decision to use the U.S. military as backup against protesters following the death of George Floyd. General Milley put himself at odd with the president in a Thursday memo where he told troops to defend the Constitution, and that's right here on the screen. He also asserted that the National Guard was not under federal control as retired generals, including former Defense Secretary Jim Mattis, denounced the president's handling of the George Floyd protest. Milley said in a letter to top military leaders that armed forces will continue to protect Americans' right to freedom of speech and peaceably assembly. As the president has called in troops to defend Washington, D.C. <sighs> yeah, you need infantry in Washington, D.C. Jesus, this man is out of his mind. We all committed our lives to the idea that is America, Millie hand wrote, in as an addition to the bottom of the letter. And you can see that written here on the screen. And he wrote, we will stay true to that and the American people. The letter represented an extraordinary public statement from the most senior U.S. military officer and was clearly directed at the commander in chief. Coming after words of Mattis and two other former chairmen of the Joint Chiefs, it suggested serious misgivings by the military about Trump himself. Milley attempted to distance himself from the president, come as the general was recently rebuked by retired generals after he marched out of the Washington, um, I'm sorry, after he marched out of the White House as part of Trump's entourage for a photo op in front of St. John's Episcopal Church while dressed in his combat uniform. And there you see him right there. Mm -mm -mm. So I guess you need a member of the military just for a photo op too, huh? Some asserted if he was going to participate in the stunt, he should have worn his service or green uniform. Defense Secretary March, Mark Esper defended Milley's uniform choice saying it was appropriate after a series of former military leaders voiced anger at both men's con uh, conduct and warned they were politicizing the military. Yeah, definitely Trump is politicizing them. The most searing condemnation of Trump came from the defense secretary, James Mattis the four-star Marine general and Iraq hero who issued his first ever open criticism of Trump in an opinion piece published in The Atlantic on Wednesday. Uh-huh. Donald Trump is the first president in my lifetime who does not try to unify the American people, does not even pretend to try. Instead, he tries to divide us, Mattis said. Mattis also likened Trump's actions to the rhetoric used by Nazis to divide and conquer, saying he was the first president in his lifetime not to seek to unite Americans. He can't do it. He's just not warm enough to do it. His lengthy condemnation of the president caused one Republican senator, Lisa Murkowski, 
to break ranks with Trump and say Mattis statement was honest and necessary and overdue. When asked if she still showed support for the president, she said, I'm struggling with it. Despite the president insisting that a show of force must be exhibited in Washington, D.C. to quell rioters and violent protesters, the scene was much more tame when, um, Tuesday and Wednesday night than previously with more peaceful protests taking place across the nation. In DC, local police said there were no arrests, and, but I did see the helicopter. There's a video of a military helicopter buzzing the crowd, like hovering over where the crowd was, trying to intimidate them to leave. I did see that. Wow. Retired Marine four-star general John Allen lashed out at Trump in an op-ed Wednesday, claiming his action in the midst of violent nationwide riots over the death of George Floyd were shameful. Allen, who commanded the International Security Assistance Force in Afghanistan, then was the envoy in the international efforts against ISIS, insisted Trump's presidency could be the beginning of the end of American democracy. The slide of United States into, um, so what he is saying is everything Trump is doing is absolutely wrong for the American people and you know, him and other generals are speaking out against what Trump is doing and the things that he's saying. And we remember the conversation he had with the governors talking about, you have to dominate people, you have to dominate them. That didn't go over well, not even with the governors, y'all. It did not go over well with them. And many of them said they are absolutely not going to do what Donald Trump is suggesting. So it seems that these generals have overruled Trump as far as the use of force in the country. And I'm sure he's not taking it well because, you know, you, you, he, he's one of those people that believe you should not say no to him, you know, and he will have a problem with this because that's all he talked about over the last couple of days, y'all the use of military, bringing the military into the states. If the governors can't get it under control, I'll do something about it. Well, not according to those generals. You won't be doing anything about it using the military. I think the National Guard is as far as you can go, Trump. So, ladies and gentlemen, please tell me what you think about the, Trump, the generals pretty much shutting Trump down on the use of the military against the protesters. <laughs> you got to love it. Man, these are some real times to be alive. But y'all, please tell me what you think. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.